Hey everybody, welcome back to One Seed, One World. So here we are at the second week of November, and the last week we've had temperatures here in the mid to high 70s. We had a couple days that were almost 80 degrees. And so there are portions of the garden that are still giving a little bit. Now, we did have a couple of uh, fairly decent frosts um, week before last. And so uh, a lot of the stuff like this basil here behind me is all frost fitting and, and probably not so good anymore. But I haven't gone through and gotten all my butternut squash yet. Uh, I've only harvested a couple. Uh, both the ones that I got were four pounders. Um, but I've been excited to check this one out here. This is one I've been waiting on um, really all season. And I've got a lot more hanging in here, so I want to cut some of these and take them in to start curing, uh, especially since we're supposed to get a bunch of rain tomorrow. So I want to get all the ripe ones out of here. And then I've got some other stuff that I want to check out, some uh, dried beans, and uh, and we'll check out what's in the, the hoop. I say hoop house, but the, the hoop that I built over the raised bed too. We've got some stuff growing in there. So let's check this bad boy out and see what's going on with it. I think I need a better knife. Oh, there we go. I mentioned on my, um, look at that, it's huge. Um, I mentioned on my tips for harvesting butternut squash video that um, you should leave a good two or three inches of stem when you harvest them because this will help them keep longer uh, once they've been cured. If you cut them off real low, they tend to, um, I don't know, not last as long, go bad faster. You have to use them up quicker. Um, so whenever you're harvesting your butternut squash, make sure you leave a good couple inches of stem on there. But I want to go and check out this guy and see how much he weighs. Wow. Six point one pounds for that one. That's pretty awesome. I got a bunch more out here to harvest, uh, so I'm gonna start collecting those and see where we're at. I think this little basket that I brought out to hang on my uh, my little way station isn't quite gonna handle the job, but I, I will probably have to weigh it maybe a few at a time and see where we're at. Okay, so I got them all weighed. That total right there was 75 pounds of butternut squash, uh, plus the other two that I've, I've already picked, which were four pounds each. That gives me 83 pounds of butternut squash this year. And it doesn't include, I've got uh, probably another five or six more out here that are kind of in between green and orange that I decided not to pick. And then I have a ton that are green that will probably never get right. 
So the butternut squash outlived the squash borer bugs and the squash bug problems. Um, squash borer bugs do tend to stay away from butternut squash for the most part if they've got other stuff to feed on, which the squash borer did wipe out my uh, honey boat squash and eventually my zucchini. So, uh, but coming out here throughout the summer every day really and uh, doing the little spray bottle with some Dawn dish soap on all the regular squash bugs to help keep them off the leaves seemed to have really helped because they did take over the garden. I've got vines, even though they're mostly dead now, but they, they're all over the garden out here. And that was just three plants. Three? Or was it six? Two. No, that was six plants. So six plants, I got uh, 83 pounds plus a lot of green ones. So, yay. Um, all right, let's see what else we got going on out here. Strawberry calendula is still blooming. And also in this bed are still some zinnias that have survived the frosts. And then over here, is some scarlet runner beans. So the scarlet runner beans, I planted two patches, patches of these, one up my little old wooden trellis here, and then also at the monkey bar trellis that I've got in the back of the garden. I'm gonna leave my camera straight. That's a little better. Anyway, uh, a lot of them are still green. Cool thing about these is they have these orange flowers on them that bloom throughout the whole summer. The honeybees and other pollinators really love them, as well as uh, hummingbirds often would visit the, both of these plants and, and kind of buzz around. Um, but I do have some that are starting to dry, or that are dry, um, that are mixed in here with all the green ones. And I want to get the dry ones picked before the rain comes tomorrow. I think there's only a few on this plant, but so check these out. We want to talk about a beautiful bean. Roll that beautiful bean footage. Yeah, look at this. Oh, as I throw them on the ground. Check out these beautiful beans. Black and purple mottled color. They're gorgeous. And they are a kind of a meaty, creamy bean that make an excellent substitute for kidney beans. In fact, they probably would, you might even like them better than kidney beans. So I would recommend growing these because they provide awesome stuff for the pollinators all summer long. And then late in the fall, you get these beautiful beans that you can dry and put in chili and soups and stews and all that kind of good stuff. And they're really pretty to look at. I found a little radish out here. Check that out. Not much to look at. He's been out here a while. He's been out here a while. I've got a bunch of cilantro in here that's gone to seed. That's been here all summer. <laughs> that's a sad looking radish right there. It's not even worth keeping. Let's see what this, oh! Now that, is a radish. This is probably not gonna be good to eat. This has been in the ground way too long. <clears throat> this is one of those Szechuan radishes, radishes that I had grown early in the season that um, didn't do anything. They never really got any type of root on them. Um, and so I put some more in this box and then they kind of got covered up by the cilantro and I just forgot about them. Um, but man, Here's another one. Crazy looking beasts when you let them go too long. And I'm kind of sad <clears throat> that, I don't know, I'll, I'm gonna go and, and cut one of these and, and see what it tastes like. Uh, but I'm pretty sure in general, if you leave radishes in that long, their flavor gets a little overbearing and not something that you necessarily want to chow that one on so but it's kind of cool so i'm losing sunlight out here pretty quickly but i wanted to take a look here in the 
hoop house. Check that out. Look at this cilantro. I need to cut some of this back um, like yesterday or like a week ago because it's gone crazy in this hoop that I put over top of this raised bed. And this is after a couple of frosts. And then uh, my cabbage and broccoli. Um, I think those are all cabbages over there. And the broccoli is all popping up along with a lot of little weeds I got going on in here. And I really haven't done anything with this bed um, at all, except since I put the, um, the hoop on it. The only thing that I've done is one day in the last, well, I forget when I built this, like a month ago, um, I threw a bucket of water in here on the cabbage and uh, broccoli. I didn't even put any on this side where the cilantro was because it was already grown so well. And also because of the, the moisture buildup from the heat in here, it stays, I think it keeps it moist enough. So need to cut back some of that cilantro. I still got all these uh, long beans in here too that have all dried out now and shriveled up. And I need to get some of these in and shelled. They're really crispy now. But before all this rain comes, I figure I might as well bring these inside and uh, dry these, or you know, add these to the dry dried beans with the um, Scarlet Runner beans. So, you know, like I said, it, here, here we are in November and there's still stuff to be had out here in the garden, but we have been fortunate that we have had a very warm, much warmer than normal fall. Uh, we've had so many days in the 70s and some, a couple of days even in the 80s. It's been pretty dry, very little rain, but you know, that's okay when you're waiting for your beans and stuff to dry out. So. I'm okay with it, but I got a lot of a lot of bean shelling to do. Also, still have tons. Even after the frost, I have a ton of um, poblanos coming in. Even these plants still have flowers on them. There's a ton of flowers, especially with the last couple of days that have been so warm. There are a ton of ton of flowers coming in. Uh, so I don't expect them to last much longer. I also have jalapenos and more of the ring of fire peppers out here. Um, it's just still been, in, in fact, I've stopped picking all that stuff because I've got so much of it that I've already processed and, and frozen and dried that now, like, I don't know what to do with all these peppers. I planted too many of them. Um, and because we had such a dry, hot summer and a dry, hot fall, uh, and I didn't really keep up with the watering after probably mid July or so, I just kind of let things, um, let nature run its course. What that ended up doing, because it was so dry and hot, the poblanos are very spicy. Um, I made uh, some uh, stuffed poblanos that were over the top spicy. Like it was more like eating stuffed jalapenos. And so my ring of fire peppers and my jalapenos jalapenos are way more spicy this year than what they normally are. So I've got enough spice in the house. I don't, I don't need more. So we'll let some of this stuff compost down. Uh, the chickens aren't really into peppers so much, so um, they haven't had any. But, you know, I'm very happy with the outcome of the garden this year. Um, I think I was closing in on 300 pounds or at least 250 pounds of produce uh, not including all that butternut squash that I just picked um, and it didn't include all the stuff that we gave the chickens there was a ton of Swiss chard and cherry tomatoes and raspberries that I never weighed I just threw out into the garden or I threw out to the chicken so I'll be interested to see how many um, what, what my overall weight total is for the garden this year. 
So I am very quickly losing the daylight out here, so I'm hoping that this video uh, comes out film-wise. Uh, and I gotta get out here and get as many beans as I can before it gets dark since it's supposed to rain um, a lot tomorrow. So, uh, thanks for stopping by and checking out the video. I hope you are still getting stuff out of your gardens, and I hope that whatever is going on in your neck of the woods and in your gardens, um, homesteads, whatever it is that you're doing, I hope that you are having great success and that you are having a fantastic day. Please subscribe to our channel, and we hope to see you again soon. Namaste.